This tutorial will explain how to create your own iBoxes. So first you need to design a box with the parameters to define the width and the depth of a box. Then you need to define the height and we get the base primitive. So we can set the view as a front for convenience and now we can add more parameters like panel thickness we need to change the value now we need to go to scale under sub to apply panels all around the box okay now we can hide the skeleton and now we can trim the panels Okay, let's make skeleton visible again. To add the back plate of 4 millimeters. Now let's hide the skeleton. Use direct to move solid by 20 millimeters. Now we can use trim to trim the top and the bottom panels by the back plate. Once it's done, we can use direct to modify the back plate to make it a little bit smaller. So once we shrink the back plate, we can move to the next step. Let's use trim again. Now we want to make a groove. So we want to trim the sides by the back plate. Okay, now we need to reduce the size of the back plate by making an offset from the sketch. Now we can use extrude with the intersect option. Okay, now we reduce the size of the back plate. Okay, so let's make another parameter and we need to define the shelf quantity. And the shelf location. Okay, so shelf quantity would be like height minus two panel thickness divided by shelf quantity plus one. Okay, that's the equation. So now we can use the clone tool to make the shells. We can define an offset as a value, like a shelf position, and the thickness is like a panel thickness. Okay, now let's select this body and hide other except the shell. So we can use direct again to shrink the shell from the sides to make it possible to use a shelf holders. Okay, we reduce it by one half millimeter and we can move it from the front by 20 using the same direct tool. So let's show all the items, set home view and hide a skeleton. Now we need to save our concept in the workspace. In general, you can save this to the library folder, but in this case, we will save it to the workspace. Let's give some descriptive names to the solids. Once it's done, we need to go to the Manage, Make Components, Make a New Assembly, and Collect the Items. 
Okay, so now we are on an assembly environment. So we can again define the view, set it as a front. Now we can change the view to the gray room to have a more clear view. We can assign the materials. Yes, let's use the filter for material assignment. Okay, so now we can assign the edge banding on the sides, the side edges. Let's change the thickness and make edge banding external. Okay. So now let's make some work plates for the hardware. Those work plates will be used as a center axis for the hardware items. So we can set the distance from the front as well as from the back. Now let's use a touch tool to place some hardware from the library using fixing joints, minifix. Okay, so now we need to set a reference geometry like an asset board, pillar boards and axis. Okay, so we have a hardware for the body. Now we can hide the components to see only the hardware. So we can change the configuration of a towel and we can use it as a reference to change the other items using a match common. Now let's reverse the visibility back to normal and let's place another item from the library which would be a shelf holder. Again, we need to pick a reference geometry like the sideboards, the bottom of the shelf, as well as the axis. Okay, let's go back to the skeleton and we need to have another parameter like distance between shelves. Okay, let's define it as to be like 150. Okay, now we will see how to pass this parameter from the concept to the assembly. We need to go to the parameter list, use, use link option, and we need to find the uh, skeleton file. Now we need to pick the parameters that we want to link. Okay, now since this moment they are available on the assembly level, so we can use a pattern to pattern the shelf. With us with a holders okay and we are choosing the direction it's better to choose it from the origin okay so we're using the parameter that we have imported okay as you can see we have two shells now we need to place a skeleton file inside of this assembly we need to change the name in a browser for the skeleton so it would be Called like at skeleton. Okay, now we need to go to the manage I made to make some I mates for a placement. It would be the top, the front, and right, and the left. It's important to switch the solution to be a flush. Now let's go to the manage box author. We need to choose a skeleton file to map the parameters. Which one represents the width, depth, height, and we need to pick two images like the top and the front. Once it's done, we need to save the changes. Now we can go to the parameters, delete folder, and let's add some more parameters like panel thickness. Okay, those parameters are not the same as they was in the skeleton level, that's why we are making this again. Now we need to make some logic rule. 
give the name or the logic rule. And now the rule will sound like parameter. Pass the parameter from the assembly to the skeleton. So as you can see on the screen, now we are mapping parameters between the skeleton file and the assembly file. Okay, once parameters was mapped, we can use form to enter simple form for uh, managing this assembly. Let's give the name for the uh, iLogic form. And we can drag user parameters from left browser to the form. We can change the display names for the parameters. We can remove spacing to make them look more natural. Okay, as you can see, once we have a cover configuration, we can change the shelf quantity as well as the distance between them. Okay. And also we can change the panel thickness. So as you can see, system reacts to those changes. Now let's open our test assembly to check how our iBox works. But first we need to close the assembly that we just made. Now we can go to the woodwork design, insert, found our assembly file, and let's place it. Now the copy of our original file is generated in the background. Okay, so now we need to switch to the solid selection mode. And we will pick the reference surfaces only for this solid. And as you can see, our box automatically adjusts to the geometry that we have just picked. So let's place another item. We can set the new prefix. Let's call it like second cupboard. And again, the new instance, the new independent copy of our iBox is created in the background. So let's select iBox reference. Let's pick the size of this of this box. So as you can see, in very short time we've made multiple multiple cabinets.